uh, even though they may never have seen a Bible. What do we do about all the people that died before the Bible was written, or while it was being written, before they had a chance to read it? Where are they right now? We well, just going to automatically, off the cuff, condemn these people. Um, well, I don't think we can do that. I don't think that um, you know you should necessarily say you know, okay, this is my religious belief, and it should be yours because I'm right. And that's the only basis for this, because the Bible is a book of faith, right? You believe it or you don't believe it? If you believe it, well, great, good for you. How many different versions of the Bible are there? Just one? Oh, I don't think so. There are different interpretations. My Catholic Bible, when I was growing up, has extra books in it. The books of the Apocrypha. I'm, I'm sorry. Heresy, okay. Now I'm going to be heckled. Thank you. I appreciate that. Talk about ad hominem and the tax, right? Thank you. Um, I won't, by the way, return the favor. I, I, I won't do that. Um, you know, there's a billion Catholics in the world. They're all wrong. We're right. We know we're right because we're who we are. I'm divinely inspired. I know I'm right. Somebody else makes the same claim. It's the same thing we're doing up here in this debate. Stand up right now if you walked into this room believing that evolution was the be-all, the end-all, the word and the way, and now you've changed your mind. Or vice versa. I'm a Bible-thumping Christian, by golly, but you know what? I'm going to throw my Bible in the trash can because I don't believe it anymore. Did we change anybody's minds that radically tonight? It's not going to happen. I could be standing up here, an audience of Baptists, an audience of Presbyterians. I've given debates and lectures to Unitarian churches, to Catholic churches, to Lutheran churches. I listened. Uh, during the break, I had a gentleman come up and tell me that, you know, uh, basically I was misguided, I was evil, I had these evil followers. You know, I don't, I don't know where that... But he loved me. He said, but I love you. You're, you're evil, you're a bad fellow, you're teaching our children all these bad things, but, you know, I love you. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, well, let's see. We've got about 10 subjects open here. I don't know if we're going to be able to close any of them. <laughs> uh, I do appreciate the, the response to, as far as ad hominem attacks, that's certainly not necessary. Uh, and, I, and I agree that uh, should not be included in the debate. The, the material that we're discussing uh, is, needs to stick with science. Quite a few of these questions deal with which version of the Bible and stuff like that. Though I have a very strong opinion on that topic, I don't think that's the purpose of this debate tonight. Uh, we can settle that another night. You mentioned about the footprints. That was interesting uh, to me. St. Louis Zoo put human feet on their Lucy display, and yet not one foot bone was found. One of the professors from Washington University said, this statue is a complete misrepresentation, which is a polite way of saying they lied. The zoo director, Bruce Carr, said, zoo officials have no plans to knuckle under. We cannot be updating every exhibit based upon every new piece of evidence. We look at the overall exhibit and the impression it creates. We think the overall impression this exhibit creates is correct. I know what impression they're trying to get across, too. They're trying to impress the kids with the idea that they've got evidence for evolution when they really don't. The footprints you referred to found in the ash, it's interesting how they date that ash, by the way. We've got a long answer to that on videotape number seven, my question and answer. And somebody mentioned during the, they came during the break and, and said, you're just in this for the money. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I don't charge anything for my seminars. I have produced videotapes for 10 years that are not copyrighted. Anybody can get them and copy them and return them and get their money back. Show me any evolutionist that does the same thing, would you please? These footprints found in the ash, uh, they said here are 3.75 million years old, but they're perfectly normal human footprints. They even said in National Geographic, the footprints are described as remarkably similar to those of modern man. The form of his foot was exactly the same as ours. Weight-bearing pressure patterns in the prints resemble human ones. Footprints so very much like our own and yet on the cover of National Geographic, they put dark-skinned, ape-like creatures. Here's a case where they find zero bones and create a missing link from footprints. Now, if the footprints are exactly like ours, how would you know it's dark-skinned and ape-like? Secondly, why did they put a toe separation if it's exactly like ours? This is propaganda, folks. This is not for education. This is propaganda and ought to be removed from the books. Oh, I think. 
One more, I need my mic on. There'll be one more question from each uh, gentleman, and then we'll have the closing remarks after that. So one more question each. Can we and take then like a two-minute break before the closing remarks? Sure, okay. we can. Because I want to get some more water. To All right. I got oh. three half of my thanks. Um, I did not get time to call up the slides that I have for this one, but I cover this pretty thoroughly on my uh, video number six about the fossil record and the sorting of the fossils. The question says, please explain the order in the fossil record from simple to complex. If you use your infamous bird bones and clams argument, please keep in mind that there are far more than birds and clams. Okay, um, let me explain what the bird to clam argument is. What has happened in the early 1800s, some people decided evolution is true, and now we must go look for the evidence. So they start with the preconceived idea that evolution happened, and they did nothing but follow Aristotle's old chain of being, that you start with the simple and go to the complex. It, evolution is nothing more than a regurgitation of Aristotle's theory from 2004 or 500 years ago, whatever it was. Um, the sorting of the fossils in the fossil record, first place, there is no clear sorting to the fossils. And even major evolutionists will tell you, look folks, it's silly for the creationists to be arguing about the order of the fossil record because there is no good order to the fossil record. The fact is, I think clams are generally found at the bottom of the geologic column, though not always. I mean, clams are found on top of Mount Everest. But clams are generally found at the bottom because they're already at the bottom. I mean, when a flood comes, they're the first ones going to be buried, obviously. So I think they're buried, birds are buried on top because birds are going to be the last ones to drown in a flood. They fly around till they run out of gas. So they're sorted based upon their habitat. Secondly, they're sorted based upon their intelligence. As best anybody can figure out, clams are not too bright. Thirdly, they're sorted based upon their mobility. Clams cannot run very fast. So they're likely to be the first ones buried. And I think if there is any sorting to the geologic column, and there isn't a real good sorting, but any sorting that there is is based on hydrologic sorting that is obviously from a flood. See, some people don't like the idea of a flood because that means God, who created the world, has the authority to judge his creation. And they, don't, they want to keep their God, if they have one, they want to keep him in a box where he has no authority to judge their sin. I'm convinced that's the real hidden agenda behind all this. They don't, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, in the last days, scoffers would come that would be willingly ignorant of the creation and the flood. And that's what we've got. Well, first of all, if there's no order, then there can be no sorting so that the clams wouldn't be at the bottom because they were stupid and the birds at the top because they were smart enough to fly away from it. They would be all mixed up. You wouldn't find the dumb animals at the bottom and the smart animals at the top. You simply would find everything all mixed up. Uh, the rest of the question, which I don't think Mr. Hovind got to, it's, it's difficult to read, admittedly. If you use your infamous birds and bones and clams arguments, please keep in mind that there are far more than birds and clams and explain why the lighter, less dense creatures are near the bottom. Um, well, you know, if the dinosaurs got caught in a flood, and you know, maybe, maybe Noah did take two of each kind of dinosaur, two dinosaur kinds, but the rest of them certainly got wiped out in the flood. Um, they're heavy. Shouldn't they sink to the bottom? Heavy things sink to the bottom when they drown. Bodies sink to the bottom until they start to decompose and they bloat and they float back up. So why wouldn't you find everything that just sort of settled to the bottom? These things sort of settle out and they get all mixed up when they, when they settle out. Um, Interesting note, uh, the single catastrophic event. You know, we brought up the fact earlier that in the Bible it claims that the earth is flat. You're also talking about a culture uh, when the Bible was written, or at least parts of it were written, who lived in, in fertile river valleys. And to them, catastrophic events were floods. So it was natural for them to write about floods. It's interesting that you don't find cultures that live in the desert necessarily writing about floods in their creation stories.